Okay, so we completed in the S 16 that was property plant equipment. Now we move further towards in day 40. Uh, I hope you are aware of this. We are going to complete three in days today in day 16, in days 40, and in days 11105. Yes, 105. So, very small two standards are there. So, we generally break accounting standard in how many parts? Six parts, generally six parts, objective, scope, definition, then recognition criteria, measurement criteria and the last is nothing but disclosure criteria. Yeah. Similarly, I will go with investment property. Why this standard was there? The scope of this standard? the definition recognition initial measurement subsequent measurement transfer disposals yeah these are the areas i'm going to discuss we don't have any more questions on this some of the questions i'll just give you through an example because majority of the point is theoretical this standard is more theoretical in nature rather than having any kind of problems on this. <coughs> now, what was the purpose of this investment property? Somewhere in AS, huh? of course, this we are in AS 13, you had investment property when you were there in IPCC somewhere, AS 13 investment property was there, yeah. But now under India's 40, there is a separate accounting standard which has been made, which derives or I can say the main objective I can say is to prescribe accounting treatment. The need, why this was? To prescribe accounting treatment for investment property and related disclosures. Now see, many entities buy property for the purpose of getting income by rentals or through capital appreciation. They want some capital appreciation. For that purpose also they buy properties. So, a need was there to segregate, separate it from property plant equipment and that is why we have investment properties that there are people who want capital appreciation or who want rental income or both. How should they account for a property plant equipment? Yeah. So, I will just define what do you mean by a investment property. So, I will say. investment property is property that is land, building or both. Now, if you look properly, I have just drawn a boundary. Investment property is a property which is nothing but land, building or both. Means, if I am holding some cranes that is not my investment properties. Though I may give the cranes on rental basis, I am holding furniture. I may give furniture on rental basis, but that is not investment properties. So, investment properties 
are nothing but investment properties property that is land building or both yes held by owner or by lessee under finance lease to earn rentals or for capital appreciation or both and not held for use in the production or supply of goods or services or for administrative basis or i can say administrative purpose or sale in ordinary course of business now let me explain not a big definition a definition is very small i have just added the definition of indas 60 pp now what is this definition investment property is a property investment property is a property okay property means land building or both means the ambit of this standard is only restricted to land building or both of them land and building either it is held by you yourself or through lease and where will that lease come finance lease because what happens under finance lease there are two parties lessor and lessee so you are a lessor i am lessee so i take up some property from you on lease which is a finance lease which is a finance lease of course now you don't have it for syllabus but the standard for finance lease also has changed in day 70 Uh, there is 116 which has been brought and it will come maybe in, in the subsequent attempts in days 116 will be there for leases but as of now two type of lease <laughs> finance lease operating lease to finance lease mein what happens the lessee jo asset le raha hai he actually recognizes the asset in the books isliye un log ne likha by the owner or by the lessee under finance lease to earn rentals like if i am holding a land if i am holding a building or i am holding both land and building to earn rentals or for capital appreciation this i may be owner or i would have taken it on a finance lease then it is nothing but investment property means to earn rentals now this is where i would like you to link on rentals come to your in day 16 the definition of property plant equipment i think this is what it was see ppe see this part for rental here also we say for rental where the difference comes वहां पे भी रेंट पे देता है तो पीपीई है इधर भी बोलता है रेंट पे देता है तो भी पीपी मीन्स देन इट इज इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी व्हाट व्हाट दिस रेंटल बेसिक डिफरेंसेस हियर आई एम गिविंग ऑन रेंटल ओनली लैंड एंड बिल्डिंग और बोथ देयर ऑन रेंटल आई कैन गिव एनी असेट आई हैव टू थाउजेंड व्हीकल्स आई गिव इट टू उबर पीपल ओला पीपल so i'm giving motor car on rental basis Are you understanding it or not i'm giving machines on rental basis that uh, diesel generator sets which we get in some parties and you know marriage functions we have those dg sets on a party plots this i give on rental basis so those item will be governed by in day 16 maape bhi rent hai but here if it is land or building which is held 
for the purpose of earning rental huh? to earn rentals or for capital appreciation or both then it will be governed by India's 40. Now very very small line of difference is there. Okay, sir, sometimes it may go there, sometimes it may go here also. I have a big property. I may use it for my own purpose also and I may give it on rental basis also. How would you identify which standard will govern it? Because the principles will change. India's 40 has its own principles. India 16 has its own principles. The principles will change. Yeah, So it becomes somewhat of challenging here. Here we say investment property is a property. Bus, land building or both held by me, owner or lessee in case of a finance lease. What to earn rentals or for capital appreciation or both? Or if you look that is the important and not held for use in production or supply of goods or services. So if I am holding a building, see, iska matlab ye nahi hai. all building will come under India's 40. All building will not come under India's 40. Because if I am holding a building for the purpose of production or supply of goods or services, or I am holding the building for admin purposes, or I am holding it, for the purpose of sale, then it will not be governed by in days 40. Did you get this point? That's why I made you write that. Investment property is a property and ye aage wala point bhati even not held for, yes. It is not held for this. Then only it is investment property. Then only the canons of AS in days 40 will apply. Clear? Now, one more uh, definition it is there. Owner occupied property. Owner occupied property. What is an owner occupied property? Owner occupied property is a property held either by the owner or the lessee in case of a finance lease. But what is the purpose? They go upper likhata and not held. Look here. Above what did I made you write down there? Not held for you. Here it is held for use in production. Yeah, or supply of goods or services or for admin purpose or sale in ordinary course of business or sale in ordinary course of business. Yeah, so there is nothing but a new term, owner occupied property. So it is not to be governed by in days 40. So what will be your... Uh, have you written? So, who will be generally covered under India's 40? So, I can say land which is held for long term capital appreciation. Examples for investment property. One, land held for long term capital appreciation not for use huh? 
second lend held for undetermined future use very much important you don't know what is going to happen in future undetermined future use you are holding some land it will be nothing but your investment property building leased out under operating lease vacant building held to be leased out under operating lease see there are a few examples i am giving you for what is nothing but investment property char cheez ko maan ke chalo yeah many more are there huh? we have given the notes i'm just giving you a brief idea there the first is land yeah held for long term capital gains capital appreciation i can say capital gains nahi second land for which you don't know what will be the future use yeah undetermined future use the building which has been given on operating lease and the vacant building held to be leased out under operating lease building is vacant but i want to give it on ऑपरेटिंग लीज तो क्या नहीं रहेगा एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वॉट इज नॉट इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी तो कैन आई से प्रॉपर्टी कवर्ड बाई इंडिया सिक्सटीन विच प्रॉपर्टी इज कवर्ड बाई इंडिया सिक्सटीन द बिल्डिंग the land which is used for the purpose of production or for supply of goods or services or for administrative purposes yeah so that is in day 16 same way it is held for the purpose of sale property covered by in day as 2 held for the sale na there is two inventory third property leased to another entity under finance lease seventy no see kids these are not investment though it is property तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इफ इट इज यूज इन द बिजनेस तो हमारा इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी नहीं है दूसरा इफ इट इज हेल्ड फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ सेल देन इट इज नॉट माई इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी एंड द थर्ड एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट आई हैव लीज आउट दिस प्रॉपर्टी टू समबडी नाउ अंडर द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इंडिया सेवनटीन लीज इज टू टाइप्स ऑफ लीज फिनेंस लीज ऑपरेटिंग लीज इन फिनेंस लीज वॉट हैपन्स वी आर नॉट रिकॉग्नाइजिंग द प्रॉपर्टी दैट इज द फिक्स सेट वी रिकॉग्नाइज द लीज रिसीवेबल सो इफ आई हैव गिवन यू that asset so i pass an entry lease receivable that person to whom i have given lease receivable account debit to the fixed asset means it is not there only in my books so it is not my investment property so three things property lease to another entity under finance lease abhi dekho tum upar dekhega to bolega sir aapne bola tha lease to aata hai lessee ke liye lessor ke liye nahi ha the person who gives the asset that is lessor the person who gets the asset is lessee for lessee it can be an investment property that's why in the definition we wrote Investment properties are properties. What are those property? Property में कौन कौन आएगा? Land, building, both, held by the owner or the lessee in case of a finance lease, for the purpose of earning rentals or capital appreciation or both, and not to be used for production or used for the purpose of providing goods or services or for administrative purpose and not held for sale in ordinary course of business. clear now see once i have written this now i'll give you some special cases some problems which will arise because of all this areas first area partial owner occupied property
partial owner occupied property. Let me make you explain here. This premises at our Andheri branch, uh, say five, 5 floors are there. 3 floors have been rented out, hmm? rental income and all those things. 2 floors I am using it. So, the question arises sir, how should we segregate? 2 floor I am using it for my classes purpose, 3 floors I have given it for rental basis. So, how should this property be segregated? Standard puts two areas, the first area, it says if the investment property can be segregated and sold off, disposed of independently, separately, then it is investment property. Means those three floors which I have given it on rental basis, if I can segregate it off, dispose of, I can sell it off on individual basis. Okay, sir, wo teen mala big jayega. Then it is nothing but investment property. Then it is nothing but an investment property. The next, if it cannot be segregated, <laughs> okay, sir, you cannot sell floor wise. As per the rules of our BMC, <laughs> you have to sell all the five floors together only. You have to sell compulsory all five floors together. You cannot sell one floor, second floor, third floor, something like that. Then the second part, the standard says, it says that. If it cannot be sold, if it cannot be sold independently, then also it is investment property provided owners occupied property is insignificant. Provided owners occupied property is insignificant. I will again speak up this so that you get an idea of it. What did I say? Partial owner occupied property. Partial owner occupied property. I have two commercial premises on the same floor. I just divided it into two parts. I divided it into two parts. One part I have given you on rental basis, another part I am using it. So now the question arises, sir, the part rental pe diya hai, is that investment property? See, the problem is not with respect to the part which I am using it for my business. There is no problem with respect to the part which I am going to use for my business. The problem is with respect to the part which is getting given on rental basis, the part which has been given on rental basis, what is to be done for that part? That is the problem. So what did the standard say? If that part can be sold off, used independently, it can be sold off or leased out, then it is nothing but a investment property. Yeah, it can be sold or leased, then it is nothing but investment property. But if it cannot be that part, this room ko do part mein tod diya tha. This part I am using, another part hai. Main bota, oh, investment property, yes, if you can sell it off, you can lease it off, then it is nothing but an investment property. You say, no sir, it cannot be sold off. It cannot be leased out. Then also it will be considered as investment property provided the owner's own property is insignificant. Now, this is totally subjective. That is totally subjective whether this owner own property part is insignificant or not. Huh? You just have to make a best judgment, totally judgmental base. So, partially partial owner occupied property. So, can I say if it can be sold or leased, then it is considered as investment property. If it cannot be sold, then also it will be considered as investment property. When it will be considered as investment property? If what? Owner occupied property
yeah, theoretical question can be asked on this. Should I move to the second area? Provision for ancillary services to occupants. Now look here, this is also special case, provision for ancillary services to occupants like I am providing some ancillary services to this property along with this property and those services are insignificant then it will be classified as investment property. Let me explain you in a basic way, huh? basic way, very much simple, I am having this building I have rented out each and every room to this occupants on an operating lease and I am providing some services of security guard, maintenance, something very, 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 very insignificant ancillary services. Okay, so this property I would require my own security guard, so they are managing it. Okay, they do not allow any trespassing and so thing like that. Then this property will be considered as investment property. Provided the ancillary service. See, I am giving property ke koi services. Bhi de raho main. I have not only given this property on rental basis, but I am also giving some additional services along with this property. See, you have a case, kyu hai? Aray, but obvious. It gets classified as PPE then. If you say, sir, my business is this is my business. So, <laughs> let this property be classified as. PPE. So, things will change. So, standard is putting each and every point into a proper order. That I am having a property, along with that I also provide some services to the occupants, provision for ancillary services to the occupants, but these services are just insignificant. Then treat this as investment property. Yeah. So, it is What example did I give here? Security services, huh? only for your understanding. But Should I proceed? Huh. Now, ancillary services are significant, then it is owner occupied property. It is owner occupied property. I have a hotel. Are you listening? Huh? I have a hotel. Then what will happen? If I have a hotel, can I say I will be giving the hotel rooms again on rental basis? Same thing, I give this property also on rental basis. What is happening? <laughs> there also I am giving you on rental basis. One day rent is this much. You use my hotel. But can I say it is all about hotel management only? The ancillary services which I am giving to my customer, the occupants is significant. 
I'll give them room services and breakfast and dinner, whatsoever. Look at the hotel management. It's a whole hotel management. Can I say the services which I'm giving to the occupants is very, very significant. It is not restricted to some minor activity. I don't say, room mein do ghanta lo, security gaadi rahega. No, I give them all kind of services. A kind of restaurant is provided to them. Swimming pool facilities are given to them. Yeah, they call somebody on the reception, they get all facilities. Bed is there. Everything is there. If you look properly, I am providing all kind of services, ancillary services to the person who come to my hotel. Now, in that case, can I say the quantum of services is significant as compared to the property? Barobarsi dekhega, the whole focus of the business is working on what? The service providing, rent providing. It's service providing. Of course, rent comes. It is just a residuary part. Okay, sir, koi mera hotel mein ek room use karta hai, I charge him. But the charge is not for the purpose of that room. The charge is for the purpose of the services which I am giving them. Then I don't say electric bill will be this much. <laughs> but agar ye jagah hai, if I have given you on rental basis, the electric bill is paid by you. Then you don't pay electric bill, water bill. All those things, all these incidental activities are taken care by me. Then in that case, it is nothing but owner occupied property very much important huh? again in this there is one case uh, with respect to that if i have given this to third party for managing the hotel then what are you understanding huh? see first i said i am giving only insignificant service ek watchman ko bita diya so you will say, sir, then uh, your main motive is not giving watchman services. Your main motive is giving the property on rental basis. That is your main objective. I say, I don't have one watchman, but I have a whole group of watchmen, plus waiters, plus cleaners, everything, dry cleaning, restaurant, everything. So what is your main objective? Providing services to the occupants or rentals? Kya objective kya mera hotel mein? Bada dena means bada, bade pe dena, wo mera main objective hai ki providing all these services is my main objective. Matlab, can I say it becomes significant? To apan bolte it is nothing but your owner occupied property. Mere ko tisra case yaad aata hai. The third case in this. Of course very debatable. I am an hotel. Kindly understand, I am an hotel. But I don't provide any services. I have given it to third party. Manage the hotel. Manage the hotel. I have constructed a hotel. I give it to third party. Outsource. You only manage. Then, then it will be investment property. Why? <laughs> because the services which I provide to the customers. So I say I don't have customer. For me, it is nothing but the person to whom I have given it. Who will tell me? Tumara hotel chala hai. Chala ho. Tum do services customer ko. Mere ko itna rent mangta. Then in that case, it is nothing but our investment properties. Third case, I am a subsidiary, you are a holding company. I am a subsidiary, you are a holding company, then tell me. I have given my property on rental basis to the holding company. I have given my property to the holding company on rental basis. So as far as subsidiary will concern, it will be investment property in standalone of subsidiary. Separate financial statements of subsidiary, it will be investment property because it comes under the definition of property. But when you prepare your consolidated financial statements, when you prepare your consolidated financial statements, can I say then that property will not be a investment property, but that property will be owner's occupied property. Because tam tum group ke hisab se dekhte ho. I am subsidiary. I have one building. This building I have given it on rental basis to the holding company. 
when you prepare financial statements for subsidiary, you will say, sir, it is nothing but investment property because it is held with an intention of earning rentals or capital appreciation or both. Of course, not for the use of production, not for providing goods or services, neither for sale. So, what is the investment property? For holding company, whatever it may be, it is operating lease. I have operating lease. So, don't think in the standalone of holding company, this property will be shown at what? It will not be shown only in the books of holding company because it's an operating lease. But when consolidation will happen, I hope everybody is aware with respect to consolidation. We will bring all these things together. So, when I bring all these things together, a set of subsidiary, a set of holding together, liabilities together, consolidation will happen. Now, this property should be your mark this investment property or owner's occupied property. You only tell. It will be investment property, ke owners are. Abhiyam log ek ho gaya. Subsidiary and holding company ka, we will prepare a single balance sheet. So, it is owner occupied property or is it investment property? But obvious, it is owner occupied property. Because now, when you look at the definition, you don't have to look at the definition from the subsidiary angle or the holding company angle. You have to look for at the definition from the group angle. From the perspective of the group, can I say it is nothing but used for the production or for the purpose of providing goods or services? So, intercompany rentals consider it as investment property. In standalone financial statements, consider it, sorry, as owner occupied property in consolidated financial statements. Here with the definition. So, what are the points we were talking about? Huh? Yeah. This were the points we were discussing. Introduction done. Oh, I missed out scope. Na? Scope only two things. Yeah, same thing like PPE. Biological assets and mineral rights. So, scope very simple. I have already spoken about biological asset. What are biological asset? Living plants and living animals. Definition we completed. Yeah. So, see, I am just going by the paragraphs of the standard one by one, one by one. I am discussing each of them. Now, I come upon recognition criteria. You only tell me recognition criteria. What should you do? Do you remember the special cases? How many special cases? Three. First, what was the first special case? Partially occupied owner's own property, I can say. So, in that first case, partially occupied investment property. So, what to do? If it is partially occupied, we say, sir, can it be sold off? Can it be leased off? Investment property, yes, then it is investment property. You say, no, sir, it cannot be sold off. Then, is the owner-occupied property insignificant? Yes, then it is investment property. Otherwise, it is no. 
second case what was the second case you are giving ancillary services that ancillary services are significant not significant if they are not significant then if they are not significant then it is investment property if ancillary services are significant then it is nothing but owner occupied property please and these three cases you have to remember very important for examination purpose rest all things are nothing but again in between Okay. Now, rec area. That was the area we have to discuss. Recognition criteria. Can you recall what was the recognition criteria for in day sixteen? two things were there ah. future economic benefit yeah barobar that is the main idea in english barobar se bolne ka it is probable that future economic benefits that are associated to the asset will flow to the enterprise yahan pe asset ki jagah kya bolne ka investment property see there you had asset and the cost can be measured reliably so what is the recognition criteria first it is probable that the future economic benefits that are associated with the investment property will flow to the entity in second i hope this to you should remember ah huh? what was that yeah very good the cost can be measured reliably so it is probable hona chahiye aisa nahi bola it should happen it is probable more likely than not what that the future economic benefits that are associated with the investment property will flow to the entity and the cost can be measured reliably see i am going on the same principles of india 16 that's why we have done this two standard together so that whatever you have learned there under india 16 the same thing is to be repeated here majority of the times initial measurement help me out initial measurement bolo at what value should you measure initial if you remember under index 16 there were three areas what were the three areas first cash second exchange very good third self construction here we have only two areas because self construction will be covered under in day 16 only investment property is those properties which are held for the purpose of earning rentals and capital appreciation a property which is constructed is not held for the purpose of earning rentals or capital appreciation so that will be covered by in day 16 so initial measurement you can have only two cash an exchange now you only tell me under cash kya kya aaya tha purchase price very good directly attributable expenses then yeah purchase cost yeah that cannot be refunded and something like that plus directly attributable expenses plus tax and 
duties of which yeah what you will not take of which no refund or credit shall be claimed and 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 and, and minus trade discount very good purchase cost plus directly attributable of course expenses see it is the same thing i just want you to remember exchange and tell me you did india 16 that we had exchange it is exchange can i say at fair value ha bolo if what there were two things ha very good commercial perfect 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 getting it okay okay i'll speak now don't worry now just i want you to remember and visualize See, the more you repeat now you remember it huh? you just have to repeat twice and thrice so you remember the whole standard only it will always be at fair value investment property will always be at fair value if it is exchange ah but it will be measured at it will be measured at the carrying value of the asset transferred if number 1 the transaction lacks commercial substance and number 2 the fair value of the asset going out or the asset coming in cannot be measured reliably cannot be measured reliably then it will go in this way hmm? so if there is an exchange now what is ha going to happen can i say some asset goes out and what comes is an investment property what is going out is some asset it may be ppe intangible asset debtors inventories whatever is going out something is going out what is coming in investment properties so at what value should investment properties be recognized at fair value unless two conditions pahila condition if the transaction lacks commercial substance then it will not be recognized at fair value at fair value unless number one the transaction lacks commercial substance what do you mean by commercial substance can i say if my cash flows don't change then it lacks commercial substance if my cash flow does not change then it lacks commercial substance and second fair value of neither of the asset can be reliably estimated where value of neither of the asset can be reliably estimated This is your initial measurement. Third item in PPE, what was there in initial measurement? Self-constructed, which is not there in, P, uh, in investment property. Because self-construction will be governed by PPE only. Now, subsequent measurement. subsequent measurement in india 16 what we had in india 16 do you remember see initial recognition pila time amesha had cost fir every year you had two models which two models were there 
कॉस्ट मॉडल और रिवेल्यूएशन मॉडल रिमेंबर अंडर दिस ओनली कॉस्ट मॉडल इज अलाउड मीन्स देर इज नथिंग लाइक मीन्स नो कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिवेल्यूएशन मॉडल नो कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिवेल्यूशन मॉडल ओनली कॉस्ट मॉडल एंड दिस इज द काव आउट हैव यू हर्ड अबाउट काव आउट IAS 40 permits both cost and fair value model this is the cow out cow out and cow in this you will have now now i hope everybody is accustomed with this term cow out something different from the international accounting standards and something which is extra in our accounting standard cow in uh, in numbering you know na how this numbering game happened like somewhere we have in days 105 somewhere we have in days 40 theek hai batata hu suno ha not relating to this this something different matlab kuch bada nahi exam mein kabhi puchta nahi log like we had our accounting standards hmm? this accounting standards बेसिकली वन टू थर्टी टू आया था गिवन बाई अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड बोर्ड ऑफ आई सी आई एट इंटरनेशनल लेवल ना दे हैड समथिंग नोन एज आई एस सी इंटरनेशनल अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड कमिटी विच यूज टू गिव आई एस इंटरनेशनल अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड ओके एंड वी यूज टू गिव अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड सम वर्ड ऑफ सिमिलर एंड मेनी एरियाज वी वर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दे नो thereafter they dissolved this committee international accounting standard committee and they form something known as iasb there is nothing but international accounting standard board and it started issuing something known as ifrs there is nothing but international financial reporting standards ye international level pe aisa sab hona chalu hua now what did they say is they started giving ifrs but those areas where ifrs was not available like they give ifrs 1 2 3 something 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 till now they have gone till 15 even 16 is there but uh, not there in our syllabus 16 has been recently introduced for leases but not there you are just having 15 till revenue from customers udhar tak pahunchai lo this ifrs came but What did ISB say? ISB say के जिधर जिधर IFRS is not available, wherever I IFRS is not available, IAS will prevail. International accounting standards will prevail. Like they gave IFRS for some area financial instruments, huh? That is IFRS nine has been given, IFRS seven has been given for financial instrument. Then international accounting standard में जो भी IAS था उसको निकाल डालो. कि भाई तुम्हारे लिए एक स्टैंडर्ड आ गया तो निकाल जाओ लाइक यू लर्न इन आईपीसीसी यू नो वी एड ए एस एट वो निकल गया क्यों निकल दिया बिकॉज ए एस ट्वेंटी सिक्स आ गया तो ए एस एट को बोला बाय बाय नॉट रिक्वायर्ड सेम वे व्हेन एफ आर एस केम मेनी स्टैंडर्ड्स विच वर कनेक्टिंग टू आई एफ आर एस अंडर आई एस रिजाइन दे वर पुल्ड ऑफ पुल्ड ऑफ मीन दे वर विदड्रॉन के नॉट एप्लीकेबल clear now we being part of the signatory and all those things i'm not going in this india also went for convergence we didn't say we'll copy paste hum log ifrs le lega aisa nahi bola humne what did we say is based on our indian context business legality we cannot have copy paste ke sir idhar ka sab le lo idhar we went for something known as convergence that was nothing but indias we went for convergence that was indias so we prepared our own set of standards which were reflecting the ias as well as ifrs we prepared our own set of standards jo ias or ifrs tha so today in india we have two reporting one is accounting standards also applicable to many companies and other is indias also applicable to many companies yeah so accounting standards are not yet withdrawn they are still there and indias is also there ab dekho kya scene hua 
if I want to correlate with IAS and I want to correlate with IAS, see here they can give IAS, IAS 1, IAS 2, IAS 3, something like this. Here also they can give 4, 5, something because the name is IAS 1, IFRS 1, both are different. But in days, we can do So, what do we do? Wherever our in days was having a reference to IAS, we give two digit and one digit series like in days 2, in days 12. So, this means that this in days has a comparative standard in IAS. So, global level mein people are using IAS to open in days. And when it wanted to give a comparison with IFRS, in Indies, we get triple series 102, 103, 104. When I say Indies 102, it means the comparative standard you will find in IFRS. So, if three digit Indies, it means the comparative standard is IFRS. If it is two digits Indies or single digit Indies, it means the comparison is where IAS. Clear till here? So, when I wrote here, in days 40, to konsa standard rahega? When I say in days 40, to can I say the comparative standard will be IS 40. So, under IS 40, this is what I wrote. Both cost and fair value model is possible. IS 40, both cost and fair value model is possible, which is not possible here. Clear to all of you? So, we were on subsequent measurement, subsequent measurement only at cost. Can you give me examples of investment properties? What are the examples of investment property? Chalo, yaad karo. What are the examples for investment property? Land, which is given on lease. Land, for which humko future use malum ich nahi hai. Yeah? Or land, which is held for the purpose of capital appreciation. Building which is given on lease, a vacant building which is held for the purpose of giving it on lease. They are all my investment properties. Yeah. Now, coming into the next area. What is the next area? Transfer. Okay, okay. I'll just look at the areas which are remaining. Okay. So, initial measurement done, subsequent measurement also done. Now, we are left out with transfer and disposals. Transfer. Transfer what? From an investment property to owner occupied property or from an investment property to a set held for sale. There is inventory. Yeah. Only when there is change. in the use only when there is a change in the use like commencement of owner occupation yeah commencement of development with a view to sell of course one point transfer will be at carrying amount i want to transfer here i want to transfer from where to what i want to transfer from an investment property to PPE, property plant equipment. Why? Because I have started with owner's occupation. 
the building which I was using it for the purpose of earning rentals. Hence, for I say no, sir, I will be using it for my administrative purposes. The building which I was using it for giving it on rental basis, now I say I want to sell off those building property. Each and every flat I want to dispose of slowly, slowly. So I just uh, commencement of development with a view to sell it off. Uh, that is transfer. Very simple, not so important. Disposal. permanently withdrawn from use and no future economic benefit is expected. Dispose of, I mean de-recognize it. When should I de-recognize? When should I de-recognize it? When it is withdrawn from use and no economic benefit is expected from that investment property. Yeah, and gain and loss is recognized in PNL. This exception in India 17, um, I can give you only when I will be in a position to teach you India 17 afterwards. Huh? That is sale and lease back. There's a concept of sale and lease back. An investment property, I sell it off and I again lease it off. And that lease is a finance lease. I sell off the investment property and then again lease off the investment property. In that case, India has its own way. It says that profit and loss not to be recognized now, but it has to be deferred. Like uh, the profit is to be deferred, loss is to be recognized. Something India has its own way. So I'm not discussing that point as of now. Yeah. So that is the end of your India's 40. The basic idea was nothing but the most important spatial cases. Huh? If you don't have any questions, you will just go through some theory which we have given and I can give you some small, small MCQ kind of questions. I can just ask you, you just answer me.
I hope you are reading the theory part, huh? this wala. Kindly read it and let me know if you have any doubts in that. I will just write some examples. Ready? And just uh, to give you a revision of these things. Uh, I hope I have covered all those points. Uh, there are no problems directly on investment property means it will be similar to your in day 16. Find out the cost. Concept is same. Add all the cost. Yeah? So exchange. Then if it is, does not have commercial substance, then nothing but book value. Means hence we are not putting any questions. Chalo. The question one which I have just means as an answer. An investment property should be measured initially at initially and subsequently both yes at what always at cost very much important this is nothing but cow out huh? so under IS 40 what happens it is at fair value or at cost property is being constructed or developed for future use as investment property is covered by which index a property being constructed or developed for future use as investment property. I am constructing something. I am constructing. Ha, very good. It will be covered by in day 16. Yeah, that's why see, when I talked about initial recognition, we didn't talk about three areas. We talked only about two areas, cash and exchange, huh? because it is covered. When can transfer from investment property happen? transfer only when there is change where change change in government what what change change in use Are you recently we did na huh? change in use when is investment property derecognized can i say it's permanently withdrawn from use and no future economic benefits are anticipated or it is shown uh, sold off to third party then we say it is derecognized huh? permanently withdrawn and all these things. Chalo. Now just tell me answer for this. Factories closed from last 
one year. The entity wishes to sell this factory. Should this be classified as investment property? Should it be classified as investment property? The answer is no, it is not investment property. It is held for sale, yeah. it is held for sale under that IS, that it is held for investment property not, but factory premises held for sale. So, it is not be classified as investment property, yeah, basics of this, clear. So, we complete of your India's 40. Uh, we start with India's one zero five non current asset held for sale and discontinued operations. resume in 5 minutes.
so let us uh, complete of the last in days for today that is in days 105. So, what does it mean the corresponding standard will be in IAS na? IFRS, huh? the number will be IFRS 5, non current assets held for sale and discontinued huh? somewhat of different. I think majority of the times you would have come across AS 24 discontinuing operations. This is discontinued operations. The points which I would like to discuss with you the objective of this accounting standard some terms which they have given us definition, recognition, criteria, abandonment, not abandonment, abandon non current assets I can say. I will just uh, use an abbreviated form non current asset, I will just say NCA, huh? measurement of non current asset classified as held for sale. Changes to plan of sale. disclosure and presentation. Again a theoretical standard huh? of course very much important with respect to any theoretical question. You cannot uh, identify a full fledged question coming with respect to it. So, we will be discussing all this point, why this standard first of all objective. Now, in days 105 prescribes accounting for non-current asset held for sale and the presentation and disclosure. of discontinued operations. Now, why this standard is required? Why I need to segregate something as non-current asset which is held for sale? I hope first of all you remember what is non-current asset under schedule 3. Current asset and non-current asset definition difference is given. Can you visualize what is current assets versus non current asset? Mm, I am sorry. It says an asset is considered to be current if, of course, this is not part of your standard, huh? this is given under Schedule 3, this is not in our standard. But if you remember it is expected to be realized, consumed, used
within normal operating cycle. Same thing, it is expected to be realized, consumed, used within 12 months. from the date of reporting. It is held for trading, it is held for trading. And the last was, it is cash <coughs> I am sorry, cash and cash equivalent. This is what you learnt in even in your IPCC with respect to what is a current asset. So what is not current asset is non-current asset. So generally PP will come under that category. Even investment property can come under that category because kahi pe ye nahi hota hai. Huh? It is expected to be realized, sold within normal operating and 12 months from that. They are all, 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 all our current asset. Now the standard talks about non-current asset held for sale. Now why, why I need to give this information to my user that I am holding a non-current asset for sale. But obvious, he can visualize my cash flows. He can estimate, make estimates with respect to how the flow of cash will be there with respect to this entity. I have one building which I was using for production basis somewhere in Chennai. Now, due to continuous trouble by labor and all these things, I want to shift it, the whole production activity to Pune. So the question arises, sir, then what will you do of this Chennai building? I say, I want to sell it off. Now, if I want to sell it off, unless and until sold off, can I say it will be shown as PPE? Yes or no? Unless until it is disposed of, it is PPE. So the user will get an information as if I am operating at two areas and making some operational profits. But that is not the case. I am not at all operating at Chennai. I am only at Pune. So I need to convey this message to my user that the Chennai building is to be sold off. And if it is sold off, it is going to give this, this cash flows. Or I have made some decision to discontinue together. It is not only one asset, but bunch of some assets, which may be a discontinued operation. We will talk on the definition later. So either it is disposed of or we are in the process of disposing it off. So the person who is going to utilize the person who is going to use my financial statement should be in a position to know it that sir, these are the cash flows from that operation. You are having your plant there, that plant was giving you this much cash flows or that particular operation was making losses, a segment was making losses and I have taken up a decision to stop that segment only. So the user will say yes sir, because you are going to stop or you have already stopped a loss making segment, your financial position will strengthen. But if I have stopped some profit making segment, maybe management decision is there that we need to stop a profit making segment, then the user also knows the fact that the financial situation has weakened. Because profit making segment band ho jayega, to your financial will weaken. Loss making band ho jayega, to you will strengthen, your financial position will strengthen. So this information is to be given to the user. See financial statements slowly, slowly if you look at the way we are going towards this is not historical. I don't want you to give historical data. What can I do with historical data past over? I would like to know what is going to happen in future something more futuristic data and there is where this all standards are slowly slowly creeping in and trying to enhance the utility yeah so the basic of this standard non current asset held for sale and discontinued operation has basic objective of aiding the utility to the users uh, utility in the sense information to the users will increase 
So the first thing which I would I have discussed is objective. This is the purpose of this standard. Now, definition. What do you mean by a set held for sale? I'll just write it down. It is nothing but a non-current set. that will be recovered through selling the asset rather than use. Very simple. What is asset held for sale? You say this asset is held for sale. So nothing but a non-current asset will be recovered. May vasul karega. I will recover the cost of this asset, but how I am going to recover this cost of the asset? I am going to recover the cost of the asset, not through use of the asset, but through sell. There is nothing but asset held for sale. Disposal group means combination. a group of asset and possibly some liability. group of a set and possibly a liability which an entity intends to dispose of in a single transaction like group of a set a factory premises I want to dispose of a factory premises which includes the premises itself machine furniture the road the goda group of assets along with there there may be some statutory liability like i have not done some production as per the commitment made to the government so i am having some liability that sir we had given you that premises the land parcel on a lease of 99 years provided you produce this many automobile nahi kiya tumne so there is some liability some statutory liability or some other dues pertaining to it Huh? There is some mortgage on that machinery. I want to dispose all of them together. That is, we say it's nothing but a disposal group. That is nothing but disposal group. Then I come upon discontinued operation. It's a component. of an entity that either has been disposed of or classified and if you look you will find both of them look similar. Who both of them look similar? Disposal group and discontinuous operation. This is our key do no. So what is the difference between these two? Disposal group and discontinuing operation.
should I speak now? Yeah. Now what, what is the difference between this? Disposal group and discontinuing operation. See, one by one. It is a component. A component means somewhere or the other, it can be a branch, it can be a segment or it can be a subsidiary. It is a component of an entity. Now, this component of an entity, of course, when I say component, I hope you are understanding that there is a difference here. There it was group of asset. Now, this is component. Now, when I say component, it means either it is a branch or a subsidiary or a segment, whatsoever it may be. And there is a plan, there is a single plan. What is this plan? This plan is to dispose of or it has already been disposed of due to this plan and this component is such that it can be identified separately for financial and operating decision making. Can you listen to this point? Why both are different? Why this are different? Discontinuing, uh, discontinued operation and disposal group. Dono mein farak kya hai? So when I talk about component, means it reflects a major line of area of operation. It reflects major area of operation. And it is such that it may be a branch, it may be a unit, it may be a segment, it may be tum kuch bhi naam de do. But it represents a separate area of operation, either a business or a geographical area of operation. And such that the activities of this component, the activities of this component can be identified separately for the purpose of financial and operating decision making. See, do no me faragira. Then I said disposal group, group of asset. Like this classroom, what is group of asset? This air conditioner, this bench is yes, there. You have a camera here, you have a projector here. This is group of asset. Things are over. But this is not a component. Try to understand, this classroom is not a component. A component, when I talk about component, Kutigila. Hmm. It can be a branch, subsidiary, segment, single. And through a single plan, is being disposed of. Means, it is deliberate. It is not suddenly, one fine morning, the board of the, hey, bech dalo. No, it is not that way. There is a plan to dispose of the component. The plan is to dispose of the component. Yes, of course, you can dispose of in a single transaction, binding sale agreement or you can go for a demerger, that is also the way, or piecemeal. Thoda thoda karke. The component can be disposed of piecemeal. But it is component. Through a single plan is being disposed of. A component is a branch, subsidiary, or a segment. Through a single plan it is disposed of. It represents major area of operations. or geographical area of operation. And this component is such that it can be identified independently for what? Yeah, for operating and financial decision making. It represents separate major area of operation.
means it is distinguishable. It is distinguishable means to musko alag kar sakte. Now, when I say it is distinguishable, the component is such that it is distinguishable, it can be identified independently for operating and financial decision making. Means the asset, the liabilities, the expenses, the incomes can be directly attributed to it. can be directly attributed to it. Now, this is the difference between a discontinued operation and disposal group. So, do not get confused somewhere. Now, the standard also lays down that many a times there are some restructuring activity which happens in an entity. This restructuring activity should not be considered as discontinued operation. Like gradual phasing out of product or some service areas of operation. We were manufacturing some kind of toothpaste once upon a time. Slowly, slowly due to change in the taste preference of the customers, what happens? Slowly, slowly, slowly that kind of toothpaste is phased out. We say, abhi ye toothpaste nahi chalega. Now, we want mint wala toothpaste, limbu dalo, what's favorite may be. So, this is known as gradual phasing out of some product lines or some area of operation. That is not discontinuing operations. It is restructuring event. It happens seldomly, but it happens. We restructure ourselves to the challenges which are there. Shifting of some marketing or production activity is also not discontinued operation. Per se, per se you cannot say, yeah, ban kya? you shifted from uh, Mumbai to Chennai. Oh, so it is this. No, no, no. Just shifting of some marketing activities or production activities does not bring you under the purview of discontinued operation. Similarly, closing down some facilities in order to enhance productivity and profitability is also not discontinued operations. Standard has given this four, three areas. Ke isko tum discontinued operation mat bol de na. Phasing out, slowly, slowly. Now, if you look properly, many big companies, they were making some products. Like, say for example, I was making biscuits. Now, what happens? The biscuits what the past generation had was all basic glucose biscuit. <laughs> this new generation will not go for glucose biscuit. It wants to have something known as cookies. But the way it has to be done with cream filled this and this and sticks and blah blah blah. So many things we put. Na? So what will happen? A biscuit manufacturing company will slowly, slowly, gradually what it will do? It will reduce the production of glucose biscuit and will enhance the production of cream filled biscuit with cookies, word and whatsoever it may be. Is this discontinued operation? Answer is no. Same way, due to some tax structure or something like that, I, I, it's feasible for me to shift from Mumbai to Bhivandi, the outskirts. So, what do you mean? Is it to be considered as discontinued? Oh, it's nothing but an industrial area. Huh. Chal. Sorry. Now, 
I shifted some of my marketing activities, some of my production activities to get that economies of scale. Of course, er earlier there was a concept of Octroi and all those things. So if you are doing some business in Mumbai, anything comes out, uh, outside from Mumbai, we, we had to pay Octroi and all those things. So people shifted their business outside Mumbai to B1D. So no Octroi was there. So that is not discontinued. You can't say, Amre Mumbai mein ban karke bar chala gaya. No, not at all. Even multiple products, abruptly you are closing it down, cannot be considered as discontinued operation. We have to. Like many companies which were into textile, they just came out of textile business and started doing some other businesses. Many companies which were in only into tobacco, <laughs> slowly, slowly, they, of course, they diversified. But that doesn't mean that area of operation is closed down. Yeah. So I'll just write it down. Following cannot be considered as discounting restructuring events. Uh, DO here means what? Uh, discounting operation is shortcut. Per C. Uh, means it has to be taken care with respect to many other things we have to look out. What did I say? Gradual phasing out of a product line or class of services. Earlier we used to provide tax return services to our clients huh? in audit, uh, you are in audit and tax. But now we find that people are using software only to file their return. So what we do? We gradually come out of those service areas and we say like, well, let's not go, uh, let's go for forensic audit, let's go for internet, something like that. That is nothing but phasing out of some area of services. That is not discontinued operation. Second. Discontinued of several shifting of some production or kya tha? marketing activity. From one location to another. Closing of a facility to achieve, yeah, very good, productivity improvement. Or some cost saving, huh? One more point, but it's from consolidated financial statements. If a subsidiary is sold, will not be considered as discontinued operation, provided the subsidiary is also into similar businesses. That of parent. Huh? So, from consolidated angle, it is not considered to be a discontinued operations. These are all referred as restructuring event. You are restructuring yourself. Huh? Per se, you cannot see a discontinued why. Of course, you need to just work out, look at the nitty gitties involved. It may be discontinued, looking at 
provided it's a component, identifiable assets, liabilities, expense, income, then yes, it can be. But per se, you can't say, sir, product ban, this can no, 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 not at all. The, I think third area was what? Uh, what was the third area? Recognition of, yeah, na? Recognition of non current asset held for sale. No. When should you? classify a non-current asset available for sale. It should be available for immediate sale, must be available for immediate sale. Uh, of course, based on some customary practices. Let me explain you this point. When should a non-current asset be recognized as held for sale? See, till now it is recognized as property, plant and equipment or as the case may be. I want it to be recognized as held for sale. Remember, the moment it is held for sale, the measurement criteria will change. Because till now, what was our measurement criteria? Either cost model or revaluation model. I'm having machinery, either I go with cost based model or I'm going with revaluation model. I say, no, sir, I want this machinery to be held as sale. So the changes, it will not be at cost model or a revaluation model. It will be valued at measurement I'm talking about. I'll talk later, but let me speak so that I'm able to explain you. It will be valued at the lower of cost or fair value minus cost to sell. Means NRV, I can say. Of course, the word is not NRV used by the standard. I am not going to show my machine at cost. India says you will be showing your machinery at cost or fair value minus cost of disposal, whichever is lower. Whichever is lower. So, this is why that is why this is very much important that when should you recognize non-current asset held for sale? When should you recognize? Otherwise, see how you can play with your numbers. I can show it at fair value, less cost of disposal, bring it down. Of course, no depreciation will be charged thereafter once it is classified as held for sale. So the first condition, non-current, recognition of non-current asset held for sale, when should this be recognized? It says it must be must be available for very much important immediate sale in its present condition it should be available for sale second it may be subject to some customary terms and condition and third the sale is Like there was a dispute and I want to sell off my factory premises, but there is a court order with respect to selling off any of the components unless and until the labor dues are cleared. So though I want to sell it off, but can I say it is not available for immediate sale in its condition. There is a court order which does not allow me to dispose of that asset. 
So it is not available for immediate sale. Second point what I have made you written there is, it may be subject to some terms and conditions like it is a property which has been uh, rented out and I want to sell it off. But there is a customary trend that sir you need to give one month notice given in the contract. So it's okay. <laughs> then it is available for immediate sale. I have given one month notice. Then it is allowed. I have one factory premises in Bangalore. I want to shift it to Ahmedabad. The whole research and development will be shifted here. Then can I say the premises at Bangalore are nothing but held for sale, non-current asset held for sale, whatever is by the factory premises. Though it cannot be sold off immediately, but I have taken some actions which indicates that I have an intention to sell it off. I have approached prospective buyers. I have asked an agent to find out who can buy my properties and so on. Though the work would have not started, but then also that is held for sale. But if I put some embargo this way, okay, unless and until the work will not start at the Ahmedabad premises, I will not sell off my Bangalore premises, then I cannot recognize it as non-current asset held for sale. Why? Because it is having a condition. What is the condition? That when either work will not start, the premises are not prepared here, I will not sell off that premises. So it is subject to condition. It may be subject to some customary terms and condition. Not those conditions which restrict transfer. So if any condition which is restricting transfer, we say sir, then it is not held for sale. And the third, the sale is highly probable. I hope you remember highly probable, more likely than not. Now the question arises, how would you know? So this highly probability comes from management commitment. There is an active efforts to locate a buyer. and market is available. In some basic condition. And expected that sale will be completed in 12 months. The sale is highly probable means how, how can you say the sale is highly probable? The management intentions are there. Huh? We are having some efforts to identify a buyer and it is expected that we will be able to sell it in 12 months. That doesn't mean a 12 months is a yardstick. If 12 months is not, it will be PPE. No, it's not that way. Extension is allowed. Like due to some factors which are not in control of the management, the sale got delayed. Let me give an example. I had a property which I wanted to sell it off held for sale and once demonetization happened, property price is stagnant. <laughs> People didn't have money only at that point of time. So what happened? I will still try to identify a buyer, but there are number of buyers have reduced in the market because of a big economic